It's been the honor of my life to coach the talented, hardworking players of the U.S. women's national team for the past four years. I am very optimistic for the future of this program, especially considering all the young players that got opportunities over the past few years who will no doubt be leaders and impact players moving forward. While we are all disappointed by the outcome at this year's World Cup, I am immensely proud of the progress this team has made, the support they've shown for each other, and the inspiration they've provided for players around the world. Now, Herc, this comes as no surprise, obviously, but timing-wise, could this decision have come earlier? And by earlier, I mean before the World Cup, when things clearly were not clicking between Vladko and the squad. Um, it's very difficult because if you look at his winning percentage, it's a very high winning percentage it's in the 70s. If you look at the way he started, taking over for Jill Ellis, the uh, two-time you know, world champion with the U.S. women's national team, they were still winning. In fact, his first loss happened to be in the Olympics. Now, the team he took to the Olympics, this U.S. women's national team, was sort of a hot potato, if you will. It was supposed to be that generational shift but he kept those players for one last hurrah. Uh, and they ended up getting the bronze medal in disappointing fa fashion for them. And you look at this, uh, first time they failed to reach the final um, in a World Cup, or, or a third place game at least. I mean, they scored four goals. Their lowest ever tally was 12. Um, this is a team that didn't look like a team, but they kept winning. And you look go back to the She Believes Cup. Uh, they won it. But they won it in individual fashion, with individual players stepping up, not a, co a collective or cohesive unit. That was probably the first time we saw the dysfunction in the midfield. You go back to the run uh, of consecutive games that they lost at the hands of, of um, England, Spain, a Spanish B team, if you will. That's when everything started for Vilda and that team. When it was 15 players who refused to play, they played against the Spanish B team without 15 of their stars and still lost. Still lost, gave up three goals. And then they lose to Germany who got outed in the group phase here. So it, it's, it's been the same thing with this U.S. women's national team where, sure, they beat the teams they're supposed to beat and beat them soundly, but when they come against top-tier competition, they lack to be a cohesive unit. They lack to show structural, tactical know-how. Uh, and in the final third, they've been very dull, very uh, just a, in a way that I've not expected this. So uh, should they have fired Vlatko somewhere along the lines? It would have been very difficult to do so because he had the merits on paper with the wins that he had going forward to keep the job. But if you were paying attention to these women and how they were playing, you saw that there was an evident lack of understanding, tactical understanding from this team. There was also a, an unbalance in this team regarding ages, right? You saw some players that were nearing the end of their careers, and I'm speaking only on this World Cup, right? And a lot of young talent, but not a lot of experience. Could he have done anything different to prevent this result? Is there, is there anything you can question specifically at the manager, decisions that he could have made different. I mean, absolutely. You talk about that gener generational shift, it probably should have happened in the Olympics. Right, It shouldn't right. have been one last hurrah for the players like Carly Lloyd or some players like whoever the case may have been in his eyes. You should have gone with the younger players and given that experience. You're not handing out first-team experience at the World Cup because that's what it was. You're handing out first-team experience at the world stage in a World Cup. And when that doesn't happen... When, when, yes, Demello, yes, exactly. When that doesn't happen, producer right now is telling us, like, in that midfield, when that doesn't happen, you're going to have these type of showings. You're going to have these type of acts. It was too little, too late, but it shouldn't have been there to start with. And I say this respectfully, Vlako should have never been named. If, right. the, if the U.S. women's national team are the best in the world, they deserve the best in the world. They didn't get the best coach in the world. They got a coach who was coaching in NWSL when there was nine teams who was successful at that level. Are they still, though, the best in the world in terms of the quality of no. players from what you have seen in this World Cup and the Euro the, last year? The U.S. women? Yeah. Oh, no. You mean the Olympics? No, 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 no. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I think they showed that. I think you could see that. And there's no surprise that in this U.S. women's national team, um, there may have been only one player in the top 10 when ESPN did the top 50, and it was Katarina McQuario. That was it. Yeah. 
I mean, you look at the top 15, the players are where they are. It should be no surprise that they're here today, and especially with not integrating new talent sooner so they don't have these first-team experiences at the World Cup. Big-time decision coming up to see who's going to lead that group of women. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.